Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about advice to first year medical coders. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Today's episode it has been inspired by a letter I got. Typically, this would have been on Letters to Blue, but uh, there's a lot of really good questions here, and I think that um, the time that I want to spend on this is, is best served if we have this all in one episode. I will say this also. I am going to be paraphrasing parts of this uh, letter only because the viewer is asking specific salary questions. You guys know my rules. I don't talk about specific numbers when it comes to salary. Why blue? Why don't you do this? Because every place in the US is going to be different in their, in their salary rates. And I don't want to be sharing information on here that, well, she said it's, it's this rate. I want to be very clear. My channel is about medical coding. Every state in the US is going to start their sal the, the medical coding salary at a different rate. You can go to the Department of Labor or the Bureau of Statistics in order to be able to look up the salary in your area. So without further ado, I will go ahead and read this letter and then I will talk about my advice at the end. So let's get started. All right. She says, hello. Sorry ahead of time for the long post. Please do read this as it is driving me crazy. I just found your YouTube channel a month ago. Love it. I am really feeling down and out and... Maybe like I'm being used by my current position. I graduated school online self-learning in 2019. I got certified with CPC a month later and I landed my first job at a health system. I code diagnostic radiology. Since October 2019, I have studied hard and put in the hard work to understand what I am doing coding wise and I am now educating seasoned coders and producing above their level. I also want, I am also the go-to person for training new coders in my department. I waited until last month to ask for a raise, which was sent to HR from my manager, but upon conversation with HR, they said, based on my experience, my pay is fair. The health system does have a merit raise program, which started three years ago, but HR told me that it has not been funded since its initiation. So since the merit raise program isn't being used, I am not eligible for a raise unless my manager submits a letter with a definite raise amount to be reviewed. I know I have only been doing this one year and I have no prior coding experience except for school. And since I did go to school, my apprenticeship status was removed last month in October. But I feel like I am putting in the extra work and exceeding my position. I should be getting equal pay as someone in my same position, which was the point of my health system making the merit raise program, but now I'm stuck because they do not use it. I wrote a letter to my manager after talking to HR, explaining what they said and outlining how I have progressed, how far I have progressed since October of 2019 and asking for a substantial raise. But I submitted the letter yesterday. My health system claims they are broke and no one will get raises this year, but I don't see it as a raise if I am wanting equal pay for my value and production. What is your advice for me getting paid for my worth? Am I crazy for wanting equal pay at this point? Just like you, I study day in and day out to be ahead of the game and progress at a fast rate, which is how I got to where I am now. I am currently learning interventional radiology as a coder two position, but there's only one coder two position in my area. And to be honest, it will be a minute before I am efficient at interventional radiology. I have also started back to college online while I am working from home to finish my last five classes to get my associates in science degree. I am doing all I can to just try and get equal pay. Thank you for uh, watching my videos uh, and I hope that the advice that I give you and anybody else in a, in a similar situation is heard because you may not like what I have to say. I think that you're doing a great job though. I will say this, uh, you're showing a tremendous amount of leadership skills, which somebody so early in the game like that a year in. 
uh, that's really great. That's something to be extremely proud of. And that's something that needs to go on your resume, by the way, uh, that you're training the seasoned coders and your production rate is very high and you are uh, mentoring the next generation of medical coders that's coming in because you're you're the designated go-to uh, to train the new people that are arriving, which I think is really great. Um, the fact that you've been there only a year and you're already getting that kind of responsibility um, is really awesome. So that is good and you should be proud of that. This part of the game is going to be your 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 time to learn. So you're not going to get the same as veteran coders who have been there because they had to come up through the ranks themselves. And it's not that um, that it's unfair to you because the salary rate that you gave me uh, is very fair for what you're starting at because you're learning. And as you said, you're learning this interventional radiology now and it's gonna take you a minute to be able to catch on to this. That's what this time is for. That this time right now is to learn and it is to earn your stripes and it is to um, get work out all the kinks and everything as far as learning and and how you are how are you researching and things like that. That's what this time is for. That is why your salary looks like it does. The fact that you're progressing is really great. Uh, the fact that you know a lot of these things is really good but it doesn't entitle you to skip over that learning process. That's what you're in right now, is that learning process. And is it hard? Is it a hard pill to swallow? Of course. But we're talking about a substantial raise in one year's time that is unrealistic. If you are interested in, in you, don't, you don't want to be paid this, this, that much, <laughs> um, then you should try to look for another job. If it really bothers you this badly, then you should try to look for another job. Get everything, write down everything that you've learned, get it on a resume and get right back out there. If you found this job as quickly as you did, you can find another job just as quickly. And now that you've had a year experience, you no longer have the dash A after your name. It is quite possible that you would be picked up at somebody who's paying you for a higher rate. But if you want my advice, I would, for the time being, because you are still, um, you're in, you said uh, you're in college. You're going back to school online to finish your degree. That's a lot of plates in the air. So to start someplace new, and you may not be doing interventional radiology, you may not even be doing diagnostic radiology, you may be doing something else. So now you got to learn something new. Oh, and by the way, you still got to do your college courses for your, um, for your associates in science. So I would take one step at a time and just slow down right now. Slow down and go through the process of learning. Everybody has to go through this. I did not start out at my current salary. I did not start out when I first got out, when I first got my first job. Heck no. Um, and, and it would be unrealistic to expect that a lot of people have unrealistic expectations when it comes to medical coding, uh, because they, they hear the salary and it's, it's the hearing the, those salary numbers. That's what they want. That's what they want. And they get fixated on it right now. I can see from your email that you are a little fixated on it. We need to not think about that. The money's going to be there. The money will come, but you right now, you got to learn, you got to learn everything you can. They hired you. And if you don't like what you're paying, what you're getting paid right now, then look for another job. But like I said, I would hold out because you've got a lot of autonomy here. And the fact that they, they give you this responsibility. Yes. Um, that's really good because that's un almost unheard of to be like that. I was like that. I trained new people and I had a little over a year, just a little over a year, but I was at right around at a year when I was already training. And I was training my supervisor <laughs> at the time. So I understand, but I knew that I had to go through the ropes. I didn't, I didn't demand a salary raise just because I did more. You always wanna do things regardless of whether you're gonna get 
money for it. You don't do things based on the fact that um, I did this, so I want this raise and I want this raise and I'm entitled to it because that's what it sounds like. And that's not where you need to be. You, you need to be focused on what you're doing because eventually you will get there. You will get to that high caliber uh, salary status. It's coming, but you have to earn your stripes. And, and earning those stripes is going to take some time. But look how fast one year went. And look at everything you get to add to your resume. Because you had a pretty impressive resume to be able to get in, right? And now you're going to, you're going to have way more stuff that you can put on your resume because you've, you've already been in this one place for a whole year. So you can absolutely move on if that's what you want to do. But again, look at everything you've got going on. And take your time. This is the time to be learning all this stuff. And it's, it's, not, it's not the time to be trying to jump from one level to another because you think you, you are entitled. You're not entitled yet. Okay? It is going to be about you have to put your time in. You have to get your stripes just like everybody else. And this equal pay, equal pay, equal pay is when you're having to compete like if you're a lady and you're competing against a man and they're trying to pay the man a little bit more money because he's a man, that's what equal pay means. So we need to sort of redirect the way that we're looking at the situation. You want to get the same amount of pay that people who have been there for years have. That is the same as saying that you want to get the same pay as your supervisor because you're supervising these other people and you're helping them. That's, the, that's saying the same thing. You're going to do things in your career that are higher than what you than what you're getting paid for. And yes, there's some people that refuse to do anything but accept what they're uh, doing. You are making a name for yourself as far as like, OK, I'm 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 doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. But don't do those things because you're saying that you want to make all this other money. Do it because you're learning it. Not because that, that the money is motivating you. The career needs to motivate you in order for the money to come. Because the money's there. But the career needs to motivate you. You need to, make, to get your time in first. Because HR already told you no. And you're being persistent. And you're asking for a substantial raise. It's not like you're asking for a percentage. That's quite substantial. And it's, it's not going to be looked on very well if you keep after it. Yes, there is a, a bit of you have to be stubborn when you're trying to get in, but you're in right now. Be patient. And that is something that is very important. And I, and I haven't really addressed that a lot because I haven't had this kind of situation before um, <laughs> or somebody coming and asking about it. But I hope you take this the right way. It, it, it may not be what you want to hear, um, but at the end of the day, it is the truth. And this is what they're trying to tell you as well. Um, that to be patient and if this facility, that's all they want to pay, then you can move on to other, other facilities. There's other facilities, there's other jobs. Now you have a whole year of experience. You've got that time in now. You can say you're experienced because if you are doing all these things and you have this all on your resume, it'll be no time before somebody else picked you up. Just like that, if that's really what you want, if that's what you're after. So there's going to be times in the beginning when you are learning and it may, you have to do the grunt work in the beginning uh, as a medical coder. And sometimes you may be tasked to do the hard stuff because all of the, um, the veteran coders are doing all of the easy clinics. I hear, I hear that complaint sometimes uh, from coders where they say, well, you know, I do all of the hard stuff and, you know, everybody that's already been there, they can do all of the easy stuff because, you know, they, they've picked over it and they know how to get to the easy stuff. That happens too. But you know what happens when you, when you overlook those things? Well, so-and-so is doing something easier than me or so-and-so is doing this and, and they're not working and, and I'm doing all of this stuff. When you start not paying attention to all that stuff and you start focusing on what you're doing, believe it or not, people are watching you and you should always do the right thing. Always try to, to learn more and push forward and do all of these things 
Don't worry about what other people are doing. Because at the end of the day, your path and their path are two different things. And when you are learning, that's what you should be doing is learning. And the fact that you are helping other people on their way up, you, th that needs to be genuine. And it doesn't need to be, well, because I want to show that I'm worth more money. Of course, you're worth more money, right? But it doesn't mean that you have the time in yet. You've got to get that time in. And that is part of the process. At least you have a job. You should be thankful for that. There are people who do internships who do not get paid for a whole year. You're getting paid. You're getting paid and you're doing and you're learning a lot of things. And you're still getting paid. So be thankful for that. And then start looking at what you're thankful for. You have a good job. They're uh, allowing you to learn. They're giving you autonomy to be able to help others. Because believe it or not, that's not always the case <laughs> in facilities. Sometimes they don't want the other coders talking to the other coders. No, you can't. The, somebody else is going to handle that. When in actuality, it would be better if you work together as a team, but... That's, <laughs> that's just my thought process on that one. But take your time and enjoy the process of learning. Look at everything that you've got going. And you've got this uh, Bachelor's of Science that you got to work on. Going to school and working full time, poof, that's a lot. And you want to add in, well, I, I think and I'm entitled and I want this money. Of course. It'll be there in time, but earn your stripes, do the grunt work, do all the things, do the hard clinics that nobody wants and do it with a smile because the, the hard clinics that you think, oh, everybody leaves this hard stuff for me and I always stuck with the hard stuff. Guess what happens when you stop complaining and thinking about all these other people and the fact that they're doing easy stuff and you just bear down and you start working on the hard stuff, the hard stuff starts to get easy. And now what? You got more skills than the people that are stuck with the easy stuff. And so things are going to be a lot easier for you. And then you're going to be able to go anywhere. When you stop thinking about other people and what they're doing, you're going to be able to go anywhere. Now, I had this issue before. I was furious with a coworker because she had left to go on leave. She had left to go on leave. And I had asked her. I said, let me, um, let me uh, know what needs to be worked on because we've got the auditors coming in and I want to be able to touch everything. So just let me know what you need uh, done and I'll do it while you're gone. Because it wasn't her fault she was going to be on leave. And she said, no. She told me to my face, no. And I said, no. And she's like, yeah, no. She goes, our supervisor hasn't come up with a plan. I said, yes, but we're a team. So we should be <laughs> working together on this. And she said, no. So I went to my supervisor and I told her, I was like, uh, the auditors are going to be coming in. The stuff needs to be done. And she's refusing to hand over the list of what needs to be done. She's like, well, don't worry about it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it, Blue. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You too? You, and she goes, I'll, I will get, I will take care of it. So I said, okay, fine. So she leaves, she goes on leave. And we have to get into um, the cabinets where she's keeping all of these lists at. So I get the list and I'm looking at it and it was all of the hard stuff that was left. She had done everything that was easy and left all of the hard stuff. And I was furious for a minute because I was thinking she did all of the easy stuff knowing that this stuff was going to be left behind and she didn't care. We're supposed to be a team and I was trying to coordinate with her and she didn't want to coordinate with me. And so I was thinking, how unfair is this? How unfair? I'm stuck with all of the hard stuff. But then I had to stop and think that was taking too much of my energy. Having that preoccupy my mind was taking too much of my energy. And I said, you know what? I have to think about who is more important here. Not my coworker who had left me with all of that, but those providers. That was who was important. I had to do this for them. So I said, okay, so I stopped thinking about my coworker and I started thinking about those providers. And wouldn't you know it, things got easier and it got much more quicker and everything got done. 
So it was me and another swing girl. She she would swing from clinic to clinic and help out. So I would give her, I gave her some of the easier ones um, to do. But the rest of the, the bulk of the hard stuff I knew was on me because the swing coder wasn't experienced in that clinic and I was. So I went ahead and took on those those harder ones and I just got into it and I did it. And everything got done. And wouldn't you know, the auditors did pull those encounters. And guess what? They were done. So when she, when my coworker got back and she says, oh, I want to thank you all for, um, you know, uh, being a team and getting all of this done for me while I was out. And I was furious with her because the, the simple fact that this was unnecessary. But she said, well, you know, our supervisor came up with a plan, didn't she? Yeah, but only at my insistence. So it it. it <laughs> now that I have this, um, that, that was like such a, a quick training ground on how to handle, um, that kind of situation. Now I am more, uh, these supposedly hard clinics are nothing to me. I fly through those encounters now. So it doesn't bother me. And again, medical coding has never worked to me <laughs> and it will never be work to you after a while. But you have to focus and you have to change what you're focusing on. Right now, darling, you're focusing too much on that money. Don't worry about it. It will come for you. But you need to focus on what you got in front of you, which is learning. And that's what you got to do. Because that's what's going to make it easier in the long run. It's easier for me right now. Like I said, when I go to work, it's not work. If you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. 400 videos ago, I started saying that. And I'll continue to say it today. I love what I do. I love being a medical coder. I wouldn't want to do anything else. So, take your time. Learn. Earn your stripes. And then move on. If it, if it really bothers you that bad. But my advice is to stay there. Grow. Learn some more. Then move on. But don't try to do all this plate spinning right now especially when you got school on your plate as well that's just my advice so i hope this helped you if you were in that situation as well and thinking that um like i said i give straightforward advice so enjoy the weekend guys i will see y'all back on monday so if you are a medical coder a medical coding student somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding a provider or a nurse i invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding i will see y'all next time Bye.